Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to talk about the climate change impacts. Uh, specifically, uh, I want to focus on the CZ modeling approach. And so uh, this is the structure of my presentation. Firstly, I want to give you a, a brief, uh, yeah, uh, what is CZ modeling approach in, in, in this climate change impact studies? And then move on to the uh, brief history of the CZ modeling. And thirdly, I, I want to give you uh, the, I think this is the state of the art scientific knowledge uh, built uh, by the CZ model. And finally, future perspectives. And so um, I think many of you uh, may know, but uh, I, I want to uh, remind you uh, the C what is CZE a modeling approach in, in this field. And so CZE is computable general equilibrium model. And generally, we have uh, multi-sectors and multi-regions. And the parameters are normally calibrated um, in basis uh, social accounting matrix. And I mean, the parameters means, you know, in production functions or consumption functions, uh, they are calibrated uh, based on this information. And normally, we update uh, these some parameters uh, to, to make uh, the future scenarios. And for example, uh, the typical examples are like uh, technological change parameters or preference changes. And uh, this model uh, can uh, capture the market-driven interactions among uh, multi-sectors and multi-regions. And nowadays, I think uh, it's uh, widely used in, in this uh, integrated assessment community. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, I think broad environmental modeling uh, are now using uh, intensively the, this approach. And the, the typical approach, which is taken in, in what we call CZE is like something like this. Uh, so we start from the climate information. Uh, then we uh, translate uh, some physical or biophysical uh, shocks from the climate information. And then fit it into CZE. And finally, we get e economic implications. And for example, so here uh, in the shock, uh, we, we have uh, crop models. Then we get uh, yield changes associated with uh, temperature changes or, or precipitation changes. And then uh, some 10% or 20% decreases in agricultural sector productivity. And then we have uh, welfare or GDP losses, something like that. And, but that's the one example. And there are multiple channels uh, of, of sharks uh, into this CZ. So one can be production, as I said, but uh, another is a household consumption. Uh, the temperature change causes energy demand, as you can imagine easily. So that would uh, affect on the household consumption function. And the other uh, is uh, endowment. So labor forces could be affected by some climate changes. Uh, for example, people would die uh, by flood or heat excess mortality and so on. And then um, I want to give you a, a brief history of this field. And as far as I know, uh, the first study he, he dealt with the climate change impact uh, is this one, Darwin uh, et al. And, and they, they did uh, agricultural impact assessment. And it, it was published in 1995 uh, as a report uh, of uh, the former USDA, I guess, yep. And this is the brief uh, yeah, a summary statistics for the uh, GCM results, uh, which is fit into the CZ. And at that time, they consider multiple GCMs here. And then, um, this is the, uh, I think, the highlight of this study, uh, which shows the regional uh, changes in gross domestic products. And yes, as I said, uh, there, there are multi-GCMs uh, to compute the uh, climate shocks. Um, here we have a uh, global total uh, GDP changes. And the percentage uh, change, is it percentage, I guess? Yeah. 
And uh, it, it's uh, very tiny in the global total, uh, but uh, there is a huge regional variety uh, spanning from like a minus uh, percent, one uh, percent to uh, plus one percent, something like that, or two percent here. And so uh, I think uh, this is a remarkable uh, initial uh, study in this field. And then uh, in 2000s, uh, there are a couple of studies uh, using a CZE. And no, uh, basically, Toll, Rosen, and Bosero uh, were the main players in this field. And I, I, I collected some uh, literatures here. Uh, I, I think there, there might be uh, other uh, literatures, but uh, uh, here are the representative sea level rise, tourism, health, energy, related climate change impacts were assessed by using CZE. And I can say that uh, this is the period uh, which the, they expand the field from a single sector to multiple uh, sectors. And this is uh, one uh, example uh, which I take, took from a sea level rise study. And again, uh, there are mm, yeah, uh, various information in this table, but uh, let, let us focus on here. Uh, uh, GDP change uh, associated with sea level rise uh, by regions. And it, it says, you know, 0.0 some percent, which is again, very small number. Um, but it is only a sea level rise effect, and we, we can imagine that we have uh, multiple sectors impact, which can be uh, much more higher than this one. Okay. And then uh, in 2010s, uh, I can say uh, matured uh, in this field. And so main players are uh, expanded, not, not the single models, but uh, we have uh, at least I, I could find uh, four main players. Uh, last decade. So one is uh, from JLC, Leon uh, Carlos, uh, CMCC, Bocero. Again, they are still uh, doing a lot of works in, in this field. And OECD, e, Rob the link. Uh, you might have known that they published uh, last year OECD report with, about the uh, climate change impacts uh, economics. And uh, finally, our group has joined uh, in this field. And yeah, I, I want to show you the AL5 information uh, uh, focusing on the impact on welfare associated with climate change here. Uh, because uh, actually, uh, since AL4 to AL5, the literature was really limited. We could add just five plots uh, during uh, the six or seven years, uh, which is colored by purple. And so here, most of them are generated by dice or fund, which is well-known cost-benefit analysis models. And okay, just one plot here, actually here, uh, is added by CZ models. Uh, that is uh, Rosen and uh, Dominic. And so we realized that we can do a lot more in this field. And so we joined that field. and. Yeah, uh, and I also would like to uh, introduce uh, other uh, modeling uh, studies. Uh, so this study is uh, led by OECD using an end linkage model. And they, they use, uh, uh, I think it, it's something like RCP 8.5 watt, uh, which in, where temperature increases around 2.5 uh, in 2050 to 2060. And the results, uh, global total GDP loss is uh, around 2%. <coughs> but regionally quite varied. Uh, this figure shows the regional variations uh, as well as uh, sectoral compositions. So here we have a world total, which is around uh, minus 2%. But some regions have, uh, of course, benefit from the warming. And some have uh, uh, very critical uh, impacts, uh, like more than 3 you know, or 4%. Uh, for example, like <coughs> India, already hot regions. No? And here I, I give you uh, another example uh, led by a GRC, uh, which was actually not covering uh, the global 
uh, scale, but uh, uh, focused on uh, European uh, regions. The, the summary of the uh, study is here. So EU total uh, welfare loss uh, is maximum is around 1% uh, in, in 2070, I guess. Yeah. And they consider much uh, climate conditions. So if we stabilize the climate, then it can be you know, small, something like uh, 0.2 or 3%. But again, this shows a regional variety here. So northern European countries basically have a benefit from the warming, uh, while uh, southern European countries would suffer from the uh, negative impacts of the climate change. And here I would like to introduce uh, our study, uh, which was uh, published uh, two months ago in Nature Climate Change, uh, which incorporates uh, more sectors, more scenarios, uh, and put them into uh, our CZ model. And so uh, this is the overall methodology of our approach. And uh, I think the basic uh, structure is pretty similar to other studies. Uh, but we, we have uh, multi scenarios in terms of climate scenarios and socioeconomic scenarios. And of course, we uh, consider the multi GCMs and put uh, the all the information into the physical or biophysical graded uh, models. And finally, the MCZ was operated to generate the total climate uh, impact losses. And here is a list of uh, the sector coverage and the uh, literature list. And so from the top agriculture, Productivity and undernourishment, heat related excess mortality, and so on. We covered uh, nine sectors in this study. I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's the yeah, almost highest number in this field. So, uh, so individual sectors analysis are uh, documented in each uh, paper. And this is the scenario framework. As I said, uh, we considered uh, multi socioeconomic dimensions. Uh, Radiative forcing levels and GCMs. So in, in total, we 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 did a uh, hundred scenarios runs. Uh, maybe I'm correct. Yeah, five multiplied by four multiplied by five. So it, it was a, a huge work for us. Uh, it was uh, 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 a big project uh, in in Japan, and we incorporate a, a large number of people in this project. And I I should note that. Uh, Adaptation is actually not well uh, quantified in this estimate. Part of the autonomous adaptation in each uh, sector, I mean, physical or biophysical models consider, and in CZ, market adjustment adaptation were considered, but they are, are really limited. So we couldn't identify the effect of adaptations in this study. And here is a, a result, a main result of the total impact, uh, global total impact associated with uh, multi sector uh, and multi scenarios. Uh, yeah. And uh, let me go through. Uh, generally speaking, we, we can see the clear uh, tendency across uh, all SSP that uh, uh, climate change has a large impact in, at the end of the century, like more than 5%. Uh, it can be like a, a 10%. If we stabilize the climate like a, a two degree target, then it can be a very, very, very small in, in every scenario. So something like less than 1%. And in, in the worst case, it, it can be a 10% impact, uh, while it, it can be a, in SSP1, uh, I guess it, it's uh, quite small. And let me uh, give you a sector composition of the impact. So here we have uh, three highlighted sectors. One is uh, from the heat-related excess mortality. It, it has, uh, uh, if we apply a, a VSL here, then it, you know, it can be a large number. So it shows. Uh, Something like uh, 30 or 40 percent of the impact coming is coming from heat-related excess mortality. 
the secondly, the green ones are the occupational health cost. Uh, it is associated with the labor productivity loss. So, uh, in particular, in the construction sectors or agriculture sectors, who are exposed to uh, uh, you know high temperatures. And and finally, cooling and heating demand uh, are colored by blue. Uh, from the total impact, it, it's, it can be a small, but uh, still it's a large sector here. And, uh, and it's, yeah, uh, in this CZ model, we have an energy representation. Therefore, we could uh, you know, estimate this one uh, within this framework. And we plotted uh, the temperature changes and aggregated uh, you know, uh, GDP changes here. And here we have a very steep curve uh, in every scenario. We have varieties actually across the scenarios. So SSP 1 uh, or 5 are uh, relatively modest sharp curve, but uh, in SSP 3, which is a uh, uh, vulnerable scenario, uh, it shows a, a, yeah, a steep slope, something like this. And I Convert it into the AR5 figure, which I have shown uh, earlier. And then SSP1 is here, and SSP2, and S3. I think we can update this information uh, by our results in, in the sense that maybe the earlier studies are, are almost fine within this field, but if temperature goes higher, then it, it should be a more high impact, something like that. And regionally, again, we have a regional variety in Africa, Asia. Basically, we have a high impact, while OECD, European uh, North America, has a relatively a small impact. That's, I think, uh, consistent with the existing study. And uh, finally, we, we did a, a sort of a decomposition analysis of the uncertainty. So we have uncertainty in uh, climate information or socioeconomic futures and whether we do climate mitigation or not. And then finally, our conclusion was that, of course, uh, the climate policy is, is the strong factor to change this uh, uh, macroeconomic impacts. Uh, but uh, in some regions, uh, there is a, a blue color, which is uh, socioeconomic uh, factors. So, you know, if we change the world from SS, like a SSP3 world to a SSP1 world, worst case, worst socioeconomic case to uh, a sustainable world, then it can uh, reduce the uh, climate change impacts. So that's the final message of this study. And so uh, finally, I want to argue about the uh, strengths and weakness of the CZ approach, uh, contrasting with other uh, approaches in this field. So uh, I, I'll uh, classify here, uh, there are three methodologies uh, to approach this uh, climate change impact. One is simple damage function uh, taken by a dice or fund. Uh, second one is econometric, which is, I, I think, recently uh, there are uh, many uh, papers in nature and nature climate change. And finally, this is uh, our approach. So uh, computational loss, of course, we are doing a, a lot in multi-models and, and combining the information that we have a high computational load, uh, while the, uh, the others are low, uh, sorry, high and the others are low. Sectoral resolution, uh, we have a high resolution, I guess. Uh, fund has actually uh, multi-sectoral uh, damage functions, uh, but DICE has uh, limited sectoral resolutions, and so I, I say mix. And econometric, uh, is, so far, the global studies has low resolution. Uh, but I know that in U.S. there is a uh, high resolution of uh, economic studies. Regional coverage, uh, uh, econometric uh, uh, has done country level. We, we do aggregate regions, like uh, 17 regions. Uh, adaptation is partly incorporated. I, I think this is uh, remained uh, for this field uh, in every uh, approach. Validity, validity of the method. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a subjective, but I think it's still medium, I think. We need to 
to work more. Uh, consideration of the various uh, socioeconomic aspects, we, we could explicitly uh, consider not only GDP or population change, but also you know, social economic, uh, for example, economic structures or adaptive capacity in agriculture sector and so on. So I say it's high. Uh, in the temporal dynamics, uh, we do a recursive dynamic model. So partly yes, and the others are also uh, partly drawing. And uh, so I think uh, these are the uh, left area we, which we need to uh, work more. So here, uh, this is the perspectives. Uh, so we, we can improve indigenous resolution. We, we've done uh, like aggregated regions, but uh, critical, uh, some, there must be a very critical uh, countries that can be you know, affected by climate change, while you know, the coast regional resolution can give us uh, rough sketches. And we need a sort of a downscaling method for that. Adaptation, as I uh, partly said, um, market-oriented adaptation is in the model, uh, but I think that can be elaborated more. And uh, we didn't have a, a special focus on our trade functions, but it's a crucial element to see the spillover effect. And other than that, uh, yeah, uh, not only the CZE, but also biophysical or physical models needs to do a lot about the adaptation by their own. Validation uh, still uh, in our field, uh, it's limited. And, uh, but I don't know how we can do that now. Uh, we might be able to validate the historical climate change impacts uh, like the last uh, 10 or 20 years, which we have observations, but uh, the climate change signal uh, still limited, so I don't know whether we can do it or not. Uh, and finally, it, we haven't yet had a model in terms of comparisons. Uh, for the energy, we have a lot. But uh, uh, the, in terms of the economic, economic uh, impacts of economics, we ha haven't had. So I think it's, it's now really needed. So this is the final remark. The time is over, so I'm going to skip it. Thank you very much.